Hi everyone, welcome back to my floor. So I have to do something a little bit more low-key for all of you this week because I've been a little bit preoccupied with other responsibilities. I'm very excited to share with you what I've been doing, but before I get to that, I do want to remind everyone to please go to the link in the description to the Instagram post where I have a giveaway going on for an 18 color set of Himi gouache. I won't get into it because I've talked about it enough, but I just wanted to remind everyone that it was there. Go check it out and enter if you're interested. So a couple of items items that I wanted to get through in this video. The first is that I have made a resolution for the month of May that I am not going to be purchasing any art supplies. The only addendum to this is that if I happen to run out of something while I'm actively using it, I can purchase a replacement for it, like a paint color, if that's something that I need. I don't anticipate that happening though, but I did want to abstain from purchasing any more art supplies for at least one month because I went a little bit buck wild in the month of April. <laughs> and I think it's just better for my bank account and my peace of mind. And frankly, every once in a while I gotta rein it in because I have all of these beautiful new tools that I can use and art supplies that I can use in my art practice. So if I don't purchase any more, that incentivizes me using the ones that I got. So I didn't want to go through an entirely new haul, but I am going to show you the two items that I purchased that are relevant to what we're going to be doing in this video. The first is a sketchbook. Now I purchased this sketchbook basically only because I thought it was attractive and I was hoping that I could use it for something very specific. I wanted to get a sketchbook that I can use for things like colored pencil and I decided to give a test run of this book here which is a plum chester sketchbook that I got through the Art Snacks website actually, which was very interesting. I didn't realize they sold individual pieces. I thought they only had subscription boxes. And I did like this book because, well, first of all, it's purple and that always tickles my fancy, but it's square, so that's pretty cool. And it lies flat when you open it. And that could be useful, of course. So I wanted to give this a test run to see if it would work for colored pencil illustrations. And that brings me to the other item that I need to show you guys, which I, I have no excuse, honestly. <laughs> my explanation is that I found it for half price, but did I need it? I'm not really sure. It is the 150 color set of Prismacolor Premier colored pencils. Uh, I've been wanting to get some actual Prismacolor pencils for a really long time, and I'm glad that I found this for as cheap as I did because the uh, full retail price of this was way out of my budget. But because I found it so discounted, I decided to just pull the trigger and buy the whole thing. And this is more colors than I could ever hope for, so we are going to put this puppy to work today and do a colored pencil illustration in my new sketchbook. But what, you're asking, are we going to draw? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you because I'm very excited to share with you what I've been doing this week. So it's Thursday now. I have two days to film, edit, and upload my video. And that is because all this week, since last Friday, I have been devoting all of my time and my attention to two new members of my little family. I got some guinea pigs and I have been acclimating them to the home and I was very excited to share them with all of you because they're so cute. Oh my God, they're just the most precious little things. So I got Digit first. I found her in a pet shop last Friday and I brought her home and started, you know, giving her a lot of attention and cuddling her and trying to get her used to the environment and used to me. And then shortly after that, realized that I should have bought a second guinea pig and when I went back to the shop where I had purchased her they were out of all of their female guinea pigs. So I hunted around all over town. I think I called every pet shop that's within my area and they were all out of guinea pigs. I couldn't believe it. So I decided to call a little bit further than in my town and I found one that was about a 40 minute drive from me that had some female guinea pigs available. And on Monday afternoon, I drove down and I picked up Cookie. Oh, thank you for the kisses, thank you. So now I have two baby female guinea pigs and they're just the fluffiest, sweetest, softest, most precious, oh. 
They're just so cute. I can't shut up about them, honestly. They're so sweet. But I did want to do a little drawing that commemorated them into my home because Pixel, who is my eldest child, she has already had a portrait done of her. Haven't you? So that means that the piggies need to be initiated into the family in a very artistic way. By the way, for anybody that's curious, um, Pixel's not really a hunter. She maybe chases flies around the apartment sometimes, but she's never really been interested in hunting anything or killing anything before, and I don't ever leave her unattended with the pigs. They have only ever been interacting with her under my supervision. So, so far, she doesn't actually really care about them very much. She will sniff them and then she will walk away. Such a good girl. All of my girls are such good girls. I'm a very proud fur mama. All right, let's do piggy art. Hello. So this Prismacolor set is so large that I can't actually keep it up on my table. I'm gonna have to put it next to me and sort of pick and choose. That's okay though, I think I can live with that. I'm very interested in uh, drawing in this sketchbook for the first time, specifically because I, I examined this a little bit before I turned my camera on and it looks like the front page is not a separate kind of paper from the rest of the paper that's in the sketchbook, which means that I can technically draw on the inside cover. So that's pretty awesome. I think I'm gonna do that. Instead of putting it on this page, I'll put my illustrations here. And then when I open my book, every time I look, it'll be of my sweet little piggy girls. I actually just got back from the guinea pig cage. I was giving them some cuddles as is customary. They're just so dang precious. I can't stop like smothering them in attention and I'm sure they're flustered by it right now because they're babies and they don't they don't understand what's going on. <laughs> and they're not used to me doing it yet. It's been um, well, it's been a week since I brought Digit home now, and it's been only a few days since I brought Cookie home, so as the weeks roll on, they will become more accustomed to me picking them up and smothering them in affection, but for right now, I think it's just giving them anxiety. <laughs> but I am, I'm so excited to draw my sweet babies, and, uh, what's funny is that, like, they're, um, they're so fluffy. They're both Abyssinian guinea pigs. Because of that, they have, like, these cute little tufts all over their body. They're called roses. I think and that could be a little bit interesting in terms of like how I actually draw them from experience of drawing or not drawing but painting I did a painting uh, commission once for a friend of mine who uh, wanted to gift her mom a portrait of their two Shih Tzus and Shih Tzus are pretty much all hair like that's just how they exist <laughs> they're 90% they're hair and then a pair of eyes and maybe some teeth poking through, but I just found like painting that kind of texture to be pretty challenging. It's lots of little, little brush strokes. So I'm wondering if it'll be any easier to do that in colored pencil. I don't seem to have this problem when I'm doing pixel portraits though, but I'm very familiar with how cats are shaped and I am only just getting acquainted with how pigs are shaped. And I'm not gonna lie, I think they're shaped really cute. They're just like little fuzzy potatoes. She's got this cute little face mohawk, <laughs> which I can't get over. I can't get over how damn cute these piggies are. And then she's got these beautiful markings. So let's, let's just do like a rough sketch really quick of her actual like color pattern because she's got like a big stripe of white going down the front of her face right here but then like a nice big band of white that sort of wraps around the back of her chin and sort of encloses one of her arms her front little little piggy arms and oh she's got these cute little feetsies and then just the little markings see there she's got like ginger fur Digit. That's who I'm drawing first. I'm doing digit first. Oh, and then she's got these tiny little feetsies with these little nails. Oh, I love them. I love, I love their little toes. <laughs> They've got funny, funny little feet. Back when I was in my early 20s, I used to have rats, and rats have very similar types of feet. Rats and guinea pigs, though, are very, very different creatures, like, um, in terms of their needs and their behaviors. Like, when I first got my rats, um, I had, I've had three in the past. The first rat that I ever had was a male rat named Chief. He was chubby and very cuddly and uh, I loved him so very much, oh my gosh, but he didn't live very long. He died after a year. And then the second rat that I had was kind of a tragic story. Her name was Midge 
and she was an albino rat with red eyes. Something tells me that she was probably blind because she wouldn't approach me, but every time I went to go touch her, she would just sort of like bite me out of defense, which I think means that she was not really aware that I was coming toward her until I was there. And unfortunately she didn't live very long either. She actually didn't survive as long as Chief did. She died after like three or four months, which was very sad. We didn't really get a chance to like get to know one another. My third rat was um, my, probably the one that I think that I had the longest and was the closest to me and her name was Lucy. And she was a little athlete. She used to monkey bar across like the bars of her cage. And I did have like a rolling ball for her. I probably, if I ever had rats again, I probably wouldn't buy another one of those balls because they're such a pain in the butt and uh, they can be kind of dangerous for small animals. But she loved that ball and she would just like roll all over my apartment, cause mayhem. And I had her for two years and then she passed away. Oh, there's a digit. Look how cute. She's so fluffy. And then on the other side, we're gonna put little Cookie and oh, my little Oreo girl. I love her so very much. So if Digit's this big, then Cookie's probably like, she's gonna start here. It's been really fun so far to get to know these little creatures. I mean, they have very distinctive personalities from one another. Cookie is definitely the mellow one and Digit has the very vocal sort of like anxious disposition. <laughs> She's still very sweet to me. Like when we go for like cuddles in bed and stuff like that, I'll take her to bed and let her sit on my chest and she'll like lick my face. Same thing with Cookie actually, but um, Digit's just more needy, I would say than Cookie is. Cookie seems to be a little bit more independent, but also a little bit more shy. Like she doesn't, she doesn't approach Digit very much and Digit will just like climb all over her. <laughs> she just puts up with it. <laughs> How am I doing? Something about this doesn't look right. Yeah, I think I, I kind of like put all this stuff a little too close to the edge. So we're gonna have to move it that way. So let's see, where is the eye in relation to the wrist? Sort of like right there. And Cookie, Cookie has smaller eyes. She's actually a smaller pig. I wonder if that means that she's slightly younger than Digit is. Because they're both around the same age. She could be just built a little bit smaller or she could be just a tad younger than her. And it's gonna be hard to tell until both of them are full grown. Because for right now, they're just such tiny little babies. Yeah, that looks better. The funny thing about Abyssinian piggies too is that like their fur just kind of sticks out in all directions. <laughs> it sort of goes wherever it wants to go and it makes them look very cute and fuzzy. But as a result, it's just, it's difficult to like draw them because they don't have like a solid form, I guess. They're just potatoes with all of these tufts of hair sort of sticking out everywhere. It definitely poses a challenge for the artist mama both of my girls were so good for their little photo shoot. I took these pictures last night. So they were very good models for Mama's Art Enterprises. I think I may have made her nose a little bit too long. Maybe if we try to like pull it in just a tiny bit. She does, she has a little short face. Yeah, there we go. And oh my gosh, I just love them so much. I think that's pretty good. How we doing? Can you guys see what I'm doing? Okay. So I've got the pigs in. I do kind of want to write their names. Should I do it down here or should I do it up here? I wanted to give them like a cool background too. I think that would be really neat. Um, I think if I'm doing a background, I'll probably like spread it up here. But if I'm going to do their names, that means it has to be down here. So time to do some lettering. Wish me luck. That didn't turn out too bad. I kind of want to darken up, or not darken up, lighten up. <laughs> I want to lighten up some of these pencil lines. Um, and I kind of want to fix this a little bit because it's just a little too thick on top. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's way better. And we gotta find some appropriate colors. I have a feeling we'll be selecting from this tray here for Digit quite a lot because of all of her ginger fur. And then Cookie is, she's black and white, so we've got some like variances of shade because obviously light hits fur a certain way that'll make it look gray which means i feel like this tray will be necessary for coloring cookie
just not been seeing anything that I've done. Wow. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that was awkward. I can't believe that that happened. I can't believe that you didn't get to see any of the actual coloring in portion of me doing my two pigs. I just wasn't paying attention to where the camera was pointing. Oh, God. I do apologize. I have my head on a bit backwards this week. <laughs> I hope you understand. If you guys happen to be seeing this video posted on Saturday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, then it's a miracle that I got it out in time. <laughs> uh, let me show you what I completed. There they are. So, I mean, I didn't do half a bad job. I love my depictions of them. They're definitely accurate. <laughs> <laughs> to what they look like, but oh god, what a silly YouTuber fail. As you can see, there's all of this room up top for me to like add some flourish, and that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, because I had to use pretty much all neutral colors for my girls, I wanted to embellish the background a little bit with some pretty designs, so pardon me. I'm going to set my camera back up, and then I will show you what I do, and this time it will be in camera shot. I'm gonna move all the pencils so that you can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed, oh my gosh. I wanted to give a brief explanation of what I was doing. I think I mentioned in a previous video that I have experience in the past with doing colored pencil illustrations and those illustrations were mandalas. So I decided to go back to my roots a little bit and do a mandala background for my two pigs, which gave me a good opportunity to flex some of the colors of this giant 150 color pencil set that I got. I knew I wasn't going to be able to use all 150 colors, but I figured if I made it as bright and colorful as possible, it would give me a good range. And I have to say that because this is my first experience with Prismacolor pencils, that I'm really not used to how soft they are. I liked it. I really enjoy how the colors blended together. And that's, of course, the appeal of these colored pencils, but it's just not something that I'm used to. And I was trying to do very intricate details in this mandala that I felt was a little bit difficult only because the pencil cores were so soft and they would just like completely crumble <laughs> under the weight of my heavy hands. So that's something that I'm going to have to learn how to adjust to as time goes on and I use these for other illustrations. But I do like how the colors blended together. I got some very beautiful gradients and I'm very pleased with my color selection. I think that this looks like it just kind of reminds me of like traditional Mexican decor. Like if you've ever seen like how beautiful and bright and colorful some of that is. That's kind of what I think this ended up looking like, even though that wasn't intentional. I was just sort of picking colors at random. Looks really good though. Have to say, I had a really good time making this piece of art today. like a dang party in there. <laughs> I made it so colorful. Oh, uh, it felt so nostalgic going back to this style of geometric drawing with colored pencils. And wow, I didn't realize how much it would actually like hurt my hand. Um, I'm cramping up pretty good. Forgot how labor intensive using colored pencils is. But I am, I'm so happy. How can you not be delighted with those two cute faces and their beautiful, brightly colored background? Okay, so uh, this video has been something of a roller coaster and I will be shocked if I get it out in time. But at any rate, it was enjoyable to reacquaint myself with the use of colored pencils and to give my two new babies the proper initiation into the family that they deserve with some portraits. And it's a very good first page of my new sketchbook too. I was very pleased with the sketchbook and the pencils. Everything turned out pretty dang good. It's only me and my sense of disorganization that's really the problem here. <laughs> so 
<laughs> I hope you can forgive me for it. I will try to be a little bit more professional next week. Fingers crossed that everything goes well and I can get this edited and uploaded in time. You'll find that out if you're seeing this on Saturday night, so uh, congratulate me. <laughs> I would appreciate a pat on the back. <laughs> I need the emotional support, please. <laughs> it's been a very stressful week. Um, I love you all. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week for our next art adventure. Until then, ciao, everybody. Is the digit under here? <gasps> I found you. <laughs> oh, good girl. Oh, what a good girl. Yeah. So good. There you go. Can I give you some pits, too? Someone came over to have a snack. Yum, yum, yum. Ooh. <laughs> you okay?